Um, you mentioned the animation. Mm. I think the animation part of you know really activates the story mm. of the life of Buddha, and it's a rather unusual strategy, a film strategy, I think. You know, the easiest route would have been simply a reenactment of some sort. So how did you come to that? That integration of interviews, animation, uh, actual footage of pilgrimage sites and artwork. So I knew that we had all this amazing artwork, 2,500 years of incredible, beautiful paintings. You go into the upstairs and you'll, you'll, you'll see the paintings and sculpture. Um, Excuse me, and I wanted all of that to come, the art to come from every different tradition. That is, it's not, this isn't a film about the Tibetan Buddhists or the, uh, the Zen Buddhists or, or the Mayana or the Theravada. It's, it really is the essential story. So the art comes from every tradition, just as if you go upstairs, you're going to see art from all the, all the traditions. Um, so I knew I had that beautiful art. Um, I went to, to India with James Callahan. He came back with these incredibly beautiful images so that you could make the film in that sense, also a dialogue with the past. You see ascetics, you see yogis. Um, you could connect with the India today. Um, but I knew that there was the, all this supernatural material that, I, and I've really felt that right away that could only be done with animation. And I found these great animators. I'd never worked with Asterix before, with Brian or Richard. I, I, I hesitate always to say their last name, because these, you know, these two Irish guys and this Jew were working on this. <laughs> uh, Richard uh, O'Connor and Brian O'Connell, I think that's the name of this. And we really worked closely together. I mean, 25 minutes of animation is a lot for a film. They did such an incredible job of visualizing it. And you know, when you're finished, um, you begin to understand better what you're doing. So it was really Deborah Parrott, my editor, who said to me, right near the end, let's have another voice. You know, Richard Gere did the narration, but let's have a woman's voice do the animation. That was Blair Brown that did that wonderful, beautiful narration. And that was so insightful. And if I would ask her why, she probably doesn't know. It's like out of her heart, you know? But what I realized in thinking about it is you get this other world. You have two worlds. You have the animation, you have a documentary. There's, there's nothing farther from documentary than animation. Documentaries about this world, animators, they can make it up, they can do anything they want. And so in a way, that animation, that world, reminds us in the Buddhist sense of how illusory our own world is. And also they, they developed a certain style of animation. It's not a cutty animation. Right from the beginning, and again, you don't really quite understand what you're doing, but we knew we did not want to cut from the wide shot to a close up, another angle. It's all transformation and change. It's drawn by, you know, hand-drawn, beautiful line drawings. And the lines can change, so an elephant can become a butterfly, and a cat, a dog. So that, again, it's like Buddhism. It's all about impermanence, flow, transformation, change. So somehow the very style that really we arrived at, and those guys accomplished just through their own hearts, there is a, a rationale for it, but you don't always know when you start. Yeah, you mentioned Richard Gere as narrator, and of course you also had interviews with the 